it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm actually going to record this as well. Yep. Because um, I, I put it up on um, on YouTube. Yep. Yeah, that'll be good. So happy Friday, Mr. Stephen. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. How much fun is it to see you? I, I actually miss all of um, my industry colleagues at the moment. Yeah, and no, I thank you for the invite. Really appreciate it. It, it. It'll be a good day. I actually am looking forward to this because, uh, like I said to you, you're kind of almost a little bit like a man of mystery. You know everybody in this industry. You're highly respected. You've got a resume that's like a um, a culinary journey of like just it's it's amazing the experience and the the journey that you've had. And I thought, you know what, it'll be really nice just to get some one-on-one -on -one time to have a chat through what that journey looked like and 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 what's led you up until this point. And um and and I'm interested to find out. Yeah, well, that's what I'm here for. So feel free to ask me any questions. Happy to tell you everything that you know. That I've but how about I even and... throw it out there to the people that are watching if they have anything to ask as well? I'm sure there'll be some, um, a bit of banter going on, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll <laughs> promise I'll behave, so we'll see. <laughs> so let's start. So you were born, were you born in Australia? No, no, I was born in Hong Kong. So we migrated to Australia when I was 12. So I came here to study and... Then school didn't work out for me after year 12. So I, I did um, the next person I knew that I liked. So I'd become a chef. And I did my apprenticeship in a, in a, in a private club in the city, in Sydney, um, Australian club. And yeah, that's where it all started. So I'm, I'm actually a qualified chef. And, and so you, yeah. you left year 12 and, and did you always know you wanted to be a chef or was it, it was just something that you discovered? Um, I always look all through when I was young, I always wanted to be um, an architect. And again, I, I, I didn't do too well at school. So I, I thought I'll do the next best, best arty thing that I think I can do, which is cooking. And I've been doing it for, yeah, for a long time now. So how long were you cooking for? Uh, so I started, I left school in 95. So 96, that's when I started. So you know, you're probably looking at, you know, 20, 25 years, 26 years. Wow. And mm. you were the director of Flair Catering. Yeah. So after my apprenticeship, um, I went overseas and did some time by myself, um, which my parents never heard of, like an Asian child gone overseas all by himself. You know, that's a big no-no, you know what I mean? And did some overseas around the world, came back and, Join up with a, with a girl that I did um, my apprenticeship with. And then at 24, we started our, our business, Flair Catering. And from there, we, we were together for about 15 years. Um, took on Chatswood Golf Club in our, as our first club. And that grew to, you know, four other clubs um, around the North Shore and Northern Beaches. And you were you know, at Long, you, you Long Reef as well. Yeah, we were, we were at Long Reef. Um, well, oh, 14, 14 years. Um, so when we took that venue on, they were only doing 20 weddings a year. At the peak of flair at the venue, we were doing 150 weddings a year. Um, wow. I remember January, that was, a, that was a busiest 31 weddings in, in January. And that's not every day. That's like a breakfast wedding, lunch wedding or, or dinner wedding. And that was, that was, yeah, that was the peak period for us. It was lots of fun. So what was the, um, Helen Louise Fraser wants to know what colour undies you're wearing, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll text her on that one later. I'll, I'll send peaks. <laughs> so, so why were you so successful at weddings? What were you doing that was bringing people to your venue? I think, look, the venue has, has, a, has a play a big part because, you know, one step off the club house is right on the beach. So we're, we're allowing people to get married on the beach and then 
you know, it's like a one-stop shop. They don't have to go off-site to get their ceremony done. They can just go right next to the clubhouse, around the beach. Yeah, you're overlooking the headland. Um, and also, we, we, we sort of brought the, the restaurant food into a club environment, like a, in, in a function environment. I mean, I don't know if you remember back, you know, 15 odd years, um, wedding was still getting done in an RSL club or, or, or function center, and the food was very, you know, steak and potatoes and, and very basic, whereas we took it to be more of a, a restaurant fine dining-ish food to, to the wedding. Um, and, and that was, you know, we were known at Longway for a long, long time. Like we were the, the leader on, on the Northern beaches for weddings. So why did you give it all up? Why did you give up? Why did you just sell flair or...? No, look, we look being in the club environment is very difficult because you don't, you don't, you're you're a business within a business, so yeah, is there any goodwill? Probably not because you know end of the day when your contract finish, you know you 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 need you need to renew it. Um, they they got to put out for tender. We finished up because you know personal reason for myself, like I was getting overweight, unhealthy, and I just needed a break. You know, fifteen years of it. It's, you know, it's a long time, you know, working, you know, six days a week. Um, you know, it's health reason I, I sort, of, sort of walk away from it. Um, and, and then we had other opportunities as well. Like after, after Flair Catering, we sort of took on a, a little restaurant called Clonisa Contas, right on Contas Beach. And that's another icon around the Mossman area. Um, yeah. That would have been so exciting. As I said, I, I um I remember Flair catering back in the day. It was it was just like this growing business, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. And I never I didn't actually realize that you you were involved in that business. So there you go. One mystery has been um well, has go. been solved. <laughs> so yeah. you specialize specialize in Asian cuisine. Um, no, not really. I mean, we've done a bit of Asian food. We've done, we've done the Indian wedding. We've done all sorts. Um, normally, you know, when, when that happens, I, I sort of consult with other chefs in the industry to help out. Um, I'm Western trained and so is all the guys that, you know, work, work for us. You know, I had an English chef. Food was amazing. You know, his, his texture, his flavours is amazing. But when it comes to Asian food, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the cup of tea. So when, when we do get things like that, you know, I, I, I do consult with um, industry chefs to help out. And how do you reckon the Australian way of doing that, that Chinese style of food, how, how, do you, how do you think that that rates? Um, being, being, a, being a Chinese person, I, I prefer the traditional Chinese. But by saying that, I think um, the fusion is, is strong in Australian culture. I think, I think, you know, the, the, the food that people do, um, you know, the fusion restaurants, some of them are amazing. You know, the texture, the flavours, you know, second to none. You know, they, they take it to a different, different level. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think I love our Chinese food here. And I think that when you get these venues now that are doing the, the, They've, they've got that fusion um, of modern Australian twists coming into it as well. I think it's really interesting what they're doing with that cuisine. Mm, mm, yeah, they, they the whole East meets the, West. The whole East yeah. meets West. I kind of love it. Yeah. I mean, even looking at the produce that, you know, they're using and the ingredients, you know, some of them, a lot of, you know, Aussies have never heard of. It, yeah. It's a whole new different flavours in the, in, in the palate. So. so what made you go into equipment? Um, so I was, after Flair, I um, went into consulting and I, do, I still do um, a, a fair bit of consulting. I actually like the company. name of your um, consulting business, by the way, inspired by food consulting. That's, um, that's just cool. Yeah, no, that, that um, I don't even know how it came out of that game, uh, that name. It just popped and I quite like it. But um, how I got the improvement, I, I guess I was doing some consulting work and, and I came in, I was working with um, a company called Southern Hospitality and, and you know, it, it sort of just worked quite well. And, and, and I ended up joining with Southern who did a lot of equipment and they do lots of smalls and, and I was working for them for about 18 months. 
I end up become the business manager for the Asian market um, and just went from there. You know, I, I always say to the young people, you, you, once you get into hospitality, you'll never leave because you always get dragged into it. You know, no matter what you do, what part of life you are, you, you still get involved in Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? There's so many different avenues you can choose to go down. It doesn't always have to revolve around the one, the one role that you've always done. Oh, you're back. Yep, there you go. I was like, I'm sitting here on my own. What do I say? <laughs> I think you might have froze again. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, I got 5G, so I don't know why. Yeah. But That's yeah, so better now. What, what, what now you're back. Get? Yep. So, yeah, so we were saying um, that it's interesting with this industry how you can start off in one role and you can go into so many different areas it, it, you are right once you get into the hospitality food service industry it's really hard to get out of it yeah 100 percent you know i you know i'm doing a bit of work with um nestlate at the moment as well um which is which is fun you know and also help with uh, another company who does um recruitment you know for hospitality staff um it just doesn't stop, like it's endless. There's so many things that you can do within the industry. That's what you're doing now. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm helping them. Um, yeah, I, I managed a couple of pages on Facebook as well. It's called the, the, the Sydney Chef Exchange in Melbourne and Brisbane. And, you know, chefs or business owners trying to advertise their, their, their position. Um, obviously, as you know, there's a shortage of chefs at the moment. So, you know, we, we try and help, you know, each other to get jobs or so, advertise jobs in, in with the industry. So tell me, what? how did you create that group? I mean, that's that's got a huge following and there's a lot of really good conversations happening in that group. And what I actually do like about it is as well that it's not, I, I, I find it to be quite a friendly group. There's no bullying in it. Mm. Um, I didn't create the group. I got invited to be an admin on it. Um, obviously, the the person who invited me, you know, seen what I've done and what I sort of help out in the industry, and and they said, Steve, look, we'd like you to be on board. Would you like to be part of it? And I mean, that was like three years ago now. Um, the group's fantastic, you know, like that. It, it just because we manage it quite well, where any negative or any any report of you know negative posts, we just delete it straight away and and you know let them know, hey, let's be above the line. It's not about you know, sandbagging each other. Mm. So, so. Yeah, but you also have a little bit of light humour in there and a bit of friendly banter. And I, you know, I see, um, you know, some of the guys that when you, when you put out something funny, it, it continues on. It's really nice. You know, I said, as I said in my post, when I was explaining you, I, I have these moments where it just makes me laugh out loud. Like you're hilarious. Yeah. I, I also got to be very careful because, you know, when we, when you become, you know, social media can be quite powerful. So, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you put in. And, and look, the people who know me know my humour and sometimes people who doesn't know me may find me quite offensive, but, you know, this is me, you know, I can't change that. So. Really, I've never actually, I never thought that, um, I've never seen you be offensive at all. Uh, you probably haven't seen the, the bad side there, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the whole purpose of the group? The whole, the, is it to make people aware of jobs that are going on or just to have a conversation? Yeah, look, the, 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 purpose, of, the purpose of the group is obviously, you know, your, your, your employment. Um, we try to get proactive about, um, you know, things like your, your, your rights as an employee or your rights as an employer. Um, you know, the, the, the mental awareness, um, you know, anything industry related, we try our best to put it on, you know, it's, 
it's very hard, you know, when 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 the group has so many followers and, and you try and get them all to be part of it and get a response, you know, there's there's you know, try and keep the the the, the feed quite fresh and, and keep them all motivated. Um, you know, the, the, the company who behind it is called Barcats, they, you know, they, they work with a lot of groups out there to, you know, put posts up for shippings and, and what have you. But look, it, it's a networking group. Um, hopefully we will be open, you know, for, um, for people to meet because we, we have plans to actually run industry nights and stuff like that, um, you know, but it won't probably ha happen until the next year now. Um, yeah, it's a, it's yeah. A group, you know. It was interesting yesterday, I had a webinar um, with Tourism Training Australia and John Hart um, put forward the, you know, what the modelling for the work stream looks like in the reopening phase. And, you know, we're, we're looking at having venues with bums on seats in December. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Mm. How's yeah, that affected got... how's that affected your business? Um, look, obviously I, I'm doing equipment at the moment. So the business I work for is BNS commercial. We we do a lot of um we, we only do guest equipment. A lot of the projects has either been delayed or be postponed. Um, but I think when we all finish up with this restriction, the business is going to boom quite quick um, and quite quite strong coming back. It'll take a little bit of time. You know, look, even if you look at last year when we went into lockdown, you know, from Feb onwards or March, um, the trend was going up and up and up. Um, but I think we will cover it a little bit quicker. But again, it depends on when, when they lift all the restriction. Um, as far as you know, projects and, and, and renovation goes, people are still doing doing work at the moment. Um, so it will be interesting to see. I, I think I think I think it will recover quite well. Yeah, I think so as well. Especially considering we're going to go into that Christmas period. I mean, you know, I just like to see that when we we look at sort of that January period where everyone goes on holidays again and vacates mm. Sydney that they maybe consider looking at uh, trying to spend some time in Sydney and, and really supporting some of those businesses that have done it really tough in the city. Look at some of mm. our own attractions as opposed to hightailing it out of town. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of upgrades as well, you know, like businesses who, you know, had um, got the cash flow or, or, or you know, they, they, they upgrade their equipment, you know, for, for, for the next phase. Yeah, you know, the bigger group, they, that's what they're doing at the moment. Where's the trends going at the moment? Um, because we have got a skill shortage and with our borders being shut for international workers um, to mm. be able to pump up our industry, has that had an impact on that, um, the equipment and what people are looking for? Uh, it depends what, 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 um, what they're doing, like yeah, you know, as far as yeah, you, know, you got you got a lot of the groups, bigger groups, um, are looking at production kitchen to streamline the way they 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 have the food ready. So rather than being a, a more labour intensive um, kitchen or restaurant, they'll put it off site, get it all um, bulk made, and then ship to different restaurants. But then again, yeah, you got you got restaurants who 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 wants to be done on site and. I don't think there is a uh, skill shortage, but I don't think that's affecting um, the industry that much, except for there's no chefs currently to, to do the cooking. But that that will come back when when the national borders open up. You know, where you get all the all the young kids and and what have you come back and they'll start doing what they're doing before. Yeah, which we look forward to. Yeah. Talk to me about regional areas. So, do you do much work out in the regional areas? Uh, I don't a lot, um, but we do have dealers, um, you know, that that support us and, and um, sell our products in the regional area. Um, they are very active, you know. You look at, you know, Newcastle for a minute; they were pumping, they were they were growing really strong. Um, it's it's slow, but it's growing. You know, it's it's, it's not a 
saying, you know, everything's come in order, but it, it, it takes time with those regional areas at the moment. It actually surprises me when we talk about Newcastle being a regional area, because to me, Newcastle's like, it's like its own little city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Any, anything that takes an hour and a half out of where I live, it's regional to me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just often, you know, when I think regional, I'm thinking like West Wyalong or Tumbora yeah. or like out in the areas. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with um, with people, with our international borders being shut and people wanting to see more of our state, um, how the regional areas cope with that influx of tourists. Yeah, look, I think, I think, the, the regional area is going to definitely going to um, do well out of this, out of the, you know, people traveling interstate or, or, or local area. Um, you know, I, I, I have done a fair few piece of equipment out Orange, what have you, Wagga Wagga. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all new, new, um, new establishment or, or pubs that want to renovate and get ready for those tourism. Yeah, that'll be interesting. So um, Casey Parsons said, do you think people are starting to head, to, uh, head more towards Australian equipment due to the freight and shipping prices increasing by 500%? Uh, look, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people do. Like when I get inquiry, you know, they do ask where they, they are made. So our product BMS is made in um, Australian Melbourne factory. Um, okay. We we got we got we we got three models. We got you know your K plus your your BNS Black and then Zero. K plus come from our own factory in in Indonesia, and we finish off all the gas work in in Melbourne, and then you got your the next model which is Black and then Zero, which is 100% built in Melbourne. There's still components where it comes from overseas. We can't stop that, you know, it, and you know your stainless or your car sign that comes from overseas. Um, that's yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It's it's safe for everyone. You know, components come from some different places. But um, BNS is Australian owned for sixty five years, um, and it's mainly Melbourne. And Mark Kaplan said, "What's the best job you ever had?" Oh, best job I ever had. Well, if, if, if I'm if assuming many... that you probably worked with him at some point, did you? Yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark's a good guy. He, uh, um, I, um, I met him uh, last year. Um, actually, I met him a few years ago when I was working for Southern. Um, but no, he's a good guy. Best job I ever had. I, if I, if, if my managing director of BNS sees this, it'll be BNS. But <laughs> otherwise, it'll be it'll be when I'll have flair. It was lots of fun. Uh, uh, yeah. That's cool. So when I was cooking, catering, yeah. So tell me, you've got a real cute little daughter. She's um, she keeps you on your toes, obviously. Yeah, Ruby's four. Um, I sent her away because of this um, Zoom meeting we got. She's in the park at the moment with my wife. She's a she's a handful, but she she's funny. She's she's very very cute. I love she, that uh, photo of her doing yoga. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, and and she she got this fascination of being a zombie at the moment. So she wants mum to draw her like a zombie. So when you see my Facebook, there's a photo of her look like a zombie. <laughs> so, yeah, she's, she, she's good. And what is it that you enjoy to do together when when you and Ruby just have you know one on one time? What sort of things do you do together? Uh, she helps me do of cooking here and there, and. Every morning she'll come into my room and go, I want some um, colouring printables. So Princess Cinderella's and, and Amber Wiggles. And, and then we spend, you know, an hour painting together. And then I'm the one who's got to clean it all up. <laughs> <laughs> so. so how does it, how, how does it, how do you manage being a, a dad to a little girl and having to get in touch with your feminine side? Uh, well, she has painted my fingernails and she has painted my toenails before and you just shut up and just cop it. <laughs> and how but, you know, it's fun. You know, it, it's fun. I, I do enjoy it. You know, it's, 
it, she, she does, you know, bring a smile to my face every day. Even if I'm have a crap day, you go see her and she just makes you smile. That's really nice. And how are you going to celebrate Father's Day? Probably um, locked up at home. Down. Yeah. Well, the wife, the wife said to me, I can actually go and get um, takeaway because we've been cooking pretty much every night. So I'm going to go and support one of my customers, which is in Eastwood, and get some maybe lobsters and crabs or what have you that I'm allowed to spend. That's pretty good. So, mm. What's your favourite food? Chinese. And, and what dish? Um, anything seafood. Yeah, like I, I crave... This is, this is a, a funny story. I... I um, yeah, before I was, the, the heaviest I ever got was about 100 kilos. And, and that's quite big for, for a five foot six person, right? And when I had my business, I don't need to work. And all I ever do is go home and get Chinese takeaway for 15 years. <laughs> I, I just don't get enough of it. I, I quite like it, you know. It's, it's, it's fresh. It's, it just, you know, it's got all different flavors. And it doesn't take a long time to cook. Chinese food I can eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, there's so many different varieties for Chinese food. Oh, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. So you love the. Um, so do you, do you have do you like the yum cha as well? Yeah, so it's probably. I mean, I when we were young, we used, my dad in Hong Kong. We he used to go to yum cha every morning before work. I mean, it's seven a.m. Um, and then when we came here, we have yum chai every week. And because of lockdown, I normally used to have yum chai with my mum and my dad probably once a week, um, if not maybe once every two weeks. But yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good time to catch up. You know, you get all the yummy food and the chicken feet and, you know, all that stuff. I was going to say that's one of the beauties of Chinese food, not obviously the chicken feet for me, but it is the fact that you've got to sit around a table, you've got the lazy Susan, you swing the food yeah. around and everyone's sharing it. It's just a great way to bring people together. Mm, mm. I don't understand the whole chicken feet thing. I know I'm going to probably create a bit of an uproar, but, um, yeah, just... Ugh. Okay, when we, when this is open up, I'll take you... We'll, we'll go to Yum Cha and I'll get you to try it. Yeah, uh, look, I've tried them. They're just not for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, um, and, and Sammy Burke's salvatating over um, beef and black bean, Mongolian lamb. He loves his oysters as well. He says to say hello. Um, Brad Bennett sends his love. Um, Mark Kaplan has said, best Chinese restaurant for breakfast in Sydney. Yes. So yeah. that would have had to have been Golden Century, right? They were almost open until breakfast. Yeah, 4 a.m. I remember we used to go, like even when I was apprentice chef, like we used to go there, um, you know, three in the morning or what have you. And then you see, you know, you've got a table of chefs and it'd be guaranteed next table will be a table of chefs as well. You know? And that was where the place to be for all the chefs after their work. Yeah, it's very sad that they... Um that they've, they've um, got into liquidation or um, shut mm. down. It's really sad. Yeah, look, Billy, Billy, who's the son of, um, you know, Eric and, and Linda, obviously, uh, he's a pretty smart guy. I don't think that's the end of Golden Century. I, I, actually, I actually think you're 100% right. And I don't know whether that's just me wishful thinking, but, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that it's definitely not the end, and I hope that it's not. Um, and that we definitely see them, you know, coming out of this. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I mean, the legacy will go on, live on, you know. I think the food's great, you know, and, and, and I'm, again, you know, I, we, we went to Golden Century when we first came here 30-odd 30, 30 years ago, and that was before the current site. It's a little bit further down, you know. That's how long they've been around. Um, it, 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 it's, it, it's the... Um, it's a place to be in Sydney, isn't it? You know, when 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 Golden Century was in full, full swing. Yeah, absolutely. And what are your hobbies? What do you enjoy to do? Oh, I, don't, I love to play golf, but I don't get time these days. I, are you, I are you a good golfer? 
I'm a I'm a hacker, but um, <laughs> I, I do try. I, I do try. Um, I, I'm not. I'm okay. Um, yeah, if my mates see these, they play sound crap, but I think I'm okay. But no, I used to, I, I played golf a lot when I was a, a kid. I obviously at long race. Um, used to play three times a week quite easily. So yeah, I, I do miss it. But look, these days is my hobby is probably just spend time with Ruby. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, fifteen years of you know working by yourself and and working hard. You know, you you want to shuffle your life now and just you know prioritize. So you said before that you were a hundred kilos. You're five foot. Mm. How tall? Five foot six. Five foot six. Yeah. So you were like a little telly tubby. Back then, yeah, yeah. I, 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 there was a photo of someone took of me when I when I last year. It was Mel Nathan. She took a photo of me, and then I compare that photo to a photo of me twelve years ago when I was my heaviest, and it's chalk and cheese. Very different. Well, congratulations. I'm really proud of you um, doing that. I mean, you know what, we got a, I got a big job ahead of me when we get out of this. But so what do you, what, 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 um, what was the driving force behind you wanting to, to do something about your weight? And how did you do something about your weight? Um, my health was declining quite bad at the tail end of flare. And I just had to start looking after myself. Like, yeah, you know, I, I had diabetes and I, I was way overweight. Um, I, it just stuck to, you know, I was aching all the time, really bad back. And, and you know, and I figured that, you know, I need to look at my life and, and, and change my bad hot, um, habit and turn it turn it around. And, and you know, now I've got someone to, you know, my wife and, and Ruby to live for and I just got to make sure I'm healthy for them. And and how did you do it? Did you start to exercise or did you, because look, at uh, the end of the day, there's a lot of us that are here that are kind of looking for a bit of inspiration when it comes to the weight bit, because, you know, like we used to be really active. <laughs> now we've been locked up at home or, you know, we're, we're limited to what we can do. There's only mm. so many walks you can do. I mean, Sammy Burke's obviously out there riding his bike and, you know, he's like marathon man, but... <clears throat> Not all of us are. And how did you take that first step in in changing your habits? I think that the biggest step I took was start to eat properly. Mm. You know, being, being a chef, you know, you, you talk to all the chefs, they, they you know, they spoil chips, they start picking on the spoiled chips or they, they survive on sugar drinks all day all long. And, you know, and, and the biggest change I had was, you know, having proper breakfast, proper lunch, proper dinner at the right time. And that's how my metabolism going. And and then before you know it, you know, my weight starts to drop and then just a bit more exercise and, and, and you know, slowly you'll get there. I mean, I'm not a very, uh, well, I used to play rugby when I was at school, but, you know, you tell me to go run, run two laps now, I'll, I'll, I'll say no, you know, but... It, it, it's a baby step at a time, you know, you just got to be consistent and also got to be um, discipline yourself. Yeah. So I, I think, I think that's, what, that's what I did, you know, discipline myself to eat healthy and eat properly and, and things have to change and, and from there you sort of take that and, and run with it. Yeah, that's good advice and I think it is just taking one step at a time. So mm. changing the subject slightly, you've got letters after your name. CFSP. Yes. Tell me about that. What is it? So that's a certified food service professional. Um, it took you a little bit to remember that then. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about that. Um, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a, it's worldwide recognised by um, by the food industry people. So it's a it's a consultant. You can go and talk to people about you know things like equipment you know the the, the tablecloth or, or cups and what have you to, to fit the purpose of the of the restaurant um a fair few guys on obviously on my linkedin also a lot of my friends actually part of it as well i think um there was a course that you can do um but it's, it's getting done over through soon now but before it was getting done through tafe um it's a title that goes you know you're pretty much a qualified consultant to, to help people. 
So, so uh, you did the course through questions. you did the course through TAFE. Yeah, it was it was, it was through um uh I forgot the the governing body what's it called, but it was it it was done at Rye TAFE. Um, the person who did it, he's American. He flew over to Australia. He made sure that you know we all did the course of two days. Um, and then at the end of it, you got a test that you got to pass. Otherwise, they won't they won't they won't allow you to you know to sign up. Um, it, it was it was interesting because you know it sort of brought back you know all the old tapes. You know when I was learning at being a chef or or all the courses I did, it, it brought back some memories and it was. It click in there. It, it actually helps. Yeah, I can imagine. Sorry, no, it's, 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 Sorry, no yeah. there was a bit of a stall there. You keep going. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yep, you go. <laughs> so done. it's a two-day course, and are they? And you can still do it now. Like, does the guy have to just go online and sign up for something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just go go online and sign up. There's a cost to it. What I'll do, I'll, I'll 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 flip it over to you, and then you can you can put it on Fit Logic if you like. It's um, it's quite a handy course, you know. It's it, it's sort of, it, it's just been recognised in the industry that you you know you you one of the you know, certified food professional. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with regards to anything, you know, from production kitchen to to equipment and stuff like that. And when it comes to training and um, and and teaching people how to use your equipment properly, do you have yeah. like do you do training courses and one on one training etc for new people? Yeah, look, we I try to get to every single person um, to to teach them how to use the equipment, how to look after the equipment. I always say to people, look. It doesn't matter if you drive a Mercedes or a Toyota. If you don't look after the equipment, it's not going to last. So same principle, you know, if you look after the equipment, it's going to last you 10, 15 years. Yeah, you'll see on the market, there's a lot of um, cheaper product out there where, you know, it will last you two years and you've got to replace it. You know? and, and a lot of the time, yeah, it's because the, 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 the team's not looking after the, the, the product. You know, it's, it's no different to, you know, um, you, you, you give it a proper clean on the on the griddle, you know, every day, every every service, you know, or let, let all the stuff, you know, all the all the juices of the meat cake on and, and then when you want to clean it, it'll take you ten hours to clean it. Yeah. You know, so um training is important. You know, some to um gas equipment because you know it, you, you it's not just yeah, you know, press a switch, you got gas involved, you got electricity involved, you got water. So yeah, if they if they've not been trained properly, you know, it, it could be a dang, dangerous for them as well. Absolutely. I mean, they're all the like really um scary elements of 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 like you can it's it's the ultimate risk, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we I mean, I I remember, so before being there, I used to work for um, Rationale, which is a a, a combi. Um, company uh, made in Germany um, you know I, I, I remember I went to a, a, a aged care facility where they had a kitchen porter kitchen hand get, got a hose and was hosing the electronic panel it's like okay you got it is water resistant but you know it's not you can't drown it you know and that's why things break down so easily so training training you know if all the establishment they should have training schedule for for the staff uh, menu for the staff as well um, so they know how to look after it how to change you know how to clean it and how to service it um, you know where, where it's possible yeah so do you do you think that one day you might go down the track of actually working in the um the setup of your kitchen as well how hard how how hard is that job uh, look, I do do the setup already, so I don't fully get involved because I'm not a qualified designer. So if someone comes to me and go, look, I've got this blank kitchen and I want this, um, this is what I want to do. So the first thing I would ask is, you know, what what sort of food you want to do, and 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 you know the um, the menu and what have you. Then we can start looking at the layout of it. 
you know, in the kitchen, you know, over the years, the, the kitchen footprint are getting smaller and smaller. So it's all about workflow, you know, about smart ideas and, and how we can, you know, produce the food a lot quicker than it used to be. And also, which are taking up so much room. You know, technology plays a big part too these days. You know, you can do um, a lot in the combi compared to, you know, traditional um, equipment. You know, so when we do, when I do like a setup, um, Basically, you, you you work with the client, find out what exactly what they need, and then you sort of do the do the draft drawing. I normally get designers involved. Um, you know, I may come up with an idea and I'll write it up, draw it up by hand, and then just go look. Do you think this will work? And then they'll draw it up. You there? I think you froze again. Did I? I can see you. Yeah, I, I yeah I can't hear you and I can't see you. You, fro you froze for a minute, but that's okay. I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like, like I said, I, I I do do a bit of um kitchen designs. Um, but mainly I I leave it to the guys. You know, you got consultants out there. They'll do um big projects. Um, and then you got you know other designers or or you got stainless steel fabricators that will do you know the who have people to do the designs. And do you think that being a chef has really helped you to understand how to create that better workflow in a kitchen? Hundred percent. When you go into think, that equipment, when you go into that equipment um, piece, I mean. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I um, for me, it's, it's always been knowing what the client wants, and then you can relate to the piece of equipment that they need. You know, like I'm not going to put in. A, a, a fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment. When I know that I need that, you know, you, you sort of talk to them and go through them, go through that with them to go. Look, this is the 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 um what you I think you need, and sort of help them sort of budget the, the kitchen a bit better as well. Being a chef, you know, you 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 sort of help them and guide them to to um what is suitable for them. Yeah, you got you got people out there that sell you know the bells and whistles of everything, but yeah, on at the end of the day, it's gonna be a win-win. Yeah, you the, the end user and and you gotta win. You know, do the right thing, and and they benefit from it. Yeah, and that builds a relationship between you two. Yeah, and I think that um that that's most possibly why. That that's how people become indeed to you, right? I mean, you've got to be, you've got to be really honest in what you you sell people in your type of role. Mm, like credibility is probably the most important thing. Um, last thing I want is people go, you know, I'll go to Stephen. No, no, I don't want to go to him because he he done wrong with this job. You know, he 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 put this all this equipment there. I can't even use it. You know. You want repeat business. You want the network. You want the credibility. You know. You want. Yeah, it's no different to you know when when I have flair. You know, you, one customer will tell twenty, and that twenty will tell another twenty or what have you. And and you know if if the customers know that you know you've done the right thing and and you build them the kitchen that they want, they'll definitely reuse you guys and 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 they also recommend you. So tell me some of the funniest stuff ups you've seen in a kitchen design. Uh, the the best lesson I've earned, which um, uh, it was when I was a student, yeah, the, the the phrase that measure twice and cut once. You know, there's there's very there's no room for error when it comes to stainless steel. And I this is the stuff up that I did myself. I remember you know measuring when I measure a um. A stainless steel bench, a custom made stainless steel bench, and I, I was five mils out. Five mils, it didn't fit in. You know, and then they have to redo the whole bench. You know, and 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 I mean that that was, you know, a very expensive lesson. But you know, you 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 live and learn, and 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 sure enough, you won't do it again. You know? Yeah. And and also, you know, you got you got you know the 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 um, another example would be you know I had a, a client. Um, who um, 
they engage a, a, a person from overseas to design the kitchen and they want to cook Asian food, but there was no wax, which, you know, for me, I was like, well, how do you do that when you've got no wax, you know, if you want to do, you know, quick Asian food? And he said, no, 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 the, the, the designer, this is the designer, this is what we got, this is from from, from overseas and we, we used them before and and we go, yep, okay, no, I said, that's what we want. We, you know, can't change his mind. And then within, oh, I think within um, a week, he came back and said, well, I would need to put a walk in. You know, and, and, and you sort of go, you, you, you can take a horse to the water, you can't force him to drink it right. But sometimes they just go and learn it the hard way. So, you know. Yeah, and have you had it where, you know, that there's been kitchens that um, have been put together and the fridges don't fit or there's something, you know, where um, that they've forgotten about, like something, I don't know, that they needed to have other than a wok for a Chinese restaurant? That's pretty serious. Yeah, look, I mean, look, this is where, yeah, consultant, yeah, the the, the dealers and, 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 and the builders got to, you know, cross the T's and stop the I's. Um, you know, when it comes to equipment, you've got to make sure you've got the right power. Um, you know, you've got the right gas meters and, and et cetera. I mean, I, I, I remember, you know, people putting um, equipment and gas equipment, that current equipment, and, and there's not enough um, power in the, in the flame. And they go, oh, oh, it's not working. But, because they always blame the equipment before they blame anything else. And when you sort of backtrack everything they get put in, you, and then you go, okay, your gas meter is not big enough. So you don't have enough gas coming in. So that's not really um, the equipment issue. Like you need to talk to your plumber, you need to upgrade to your a bigger gas um, meter. Or people who doesn't put enough power when they, when they put in the kitchen and it trips everything every time you use a piece of equipment. So but it's very important, you know, when, 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 when you come in to fit out, you know, you've got to make sure everything, it just ticks the boxes, otherwise you're in big trouble. So Tim Collette's just written, great work, Stephen, enjoying this session very much. Tell me how much you enjoy trade shows and, um, and what sort of opportunities they've opened up for you. Trade show is fantastic because, you know, you get to meet a lot of different customers, even customers that never used your product before. Um, and, and you also get to catch up with a lot of people um, in the industry, you know, team, for example, Mark is another one, you know, all the, all the, all the guys I used to work with, with Rationale, it's, it's fantastic, you know, you, you catch up with them and, and you get to see all the innovation, all the new product, um, you know, that's coming out. Um, and it's, I think trade is very important and um, it, it just opened up doors for you because, you know, you, 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 you get to see um, things that you've never seen of before. Um, you get to see a thousand people as opposed to, you know, six people. Like, you know, the amount of people that you see coming through the door and people you haven't seen for years and people that have moved jobs and, um, it's just like a big gossip fest as well. Well, the hospitality in a really good way. Yeah, it's, it's it's a small circle. Like people, everyone knows everyone. You know, like you said before. You know, people you spoke to people about me and they know me, and everyone knows everyone. You know, and 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 and, and with the trade show, like everyone gets together. It's, it's once a year. Everyone gets together and just talk about you know what's going on. You know, it's it's it's, it's fantastic. It's something that um, I have to say, you know, it's something we've really missed is, is the trade shows and the competitions and the, the networking and being able to see each other. And um, it, it's been a real loss over this COVID period. Yeah, look, I, I feel for a lot of the guys um, who, who can't go to trade shows and who can't show the trade shows. Um, it's the time that they sort of show off what they got. And also, you know, it's, I mean, the guys that, you know, I haven't seen for over 12 months, you know, it's, it's, it's a real loss. I, I agree with you. And do you reckon that when we get back to the trade shows early next year, that there'll be an emphasis on um, 
innovation or do you think that it'll just be quite mixed um, where people will be just really happy to see each other showing reinstilling the messaging that they currently have in place like what do you think it'll be a focus of i think it's going to be better both like i mean look during this COVID, you know um there's suppliers out there you know launching new new products um new models and stuff like that so i think the trade show is going to be a mix of both you know it's going to be okay let's this is the equipment that we got now and also this is some of the new stuff that we got i, I, I don't think it will There'll be much different from previous show that you know we've shown yeah and what do you think will have changed when we come back into um business well as normal as can be expected what do you think that we've learned and what do you think will change once we get back to normality um i think um it's how we do things i, I think you know the, the way we sell things obviously like even if you look at the dining right for for food people you know, like take away that's just taken off you know like everyone just go order uber eats and what have you like things has changed so much dramatically since COVID. um the food industry has completely reinvented itself really i mean gone the days where you've got a, a, the pizza shop you know got their own driver now it's all like the, the network of uber eats um, food stores no longer, but you know you've got DoorDash and it's, it's different. It's 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 a touch of a phone, and you can get things. You know you even see um, some of the supplies in in the equipment world. You know they got apps and stuff like that as well. So yeah, there's different. been a lot of advancement. Do you think it's been a good opportunity during this time for businesses to really look in? what they're doing and, and see where there are opportunities. They've been able to have conversations with people that they normally wouldn't be able to have. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I think you know, the, the, you know, just like, again, you know, with the apps and stuff like that, or, or you can, you, like even for our product, you know, we, we, we've gone from a, a, a traditional data plate to a QR code where you can just scan it and then it brings up a, a warranty form you know, that's how easy it is. So, um, yeah, you can log your service call on over the phone. Well, for example, some, some of the um, um, technologies out there, you can, you can um, download all the recipes on, onto your, your, your phone, to your, your, your equipment, you know? So it, it definitely has changed and, and, and it's, it's only going to get better. Oh, 100%. 100% agree with you there. It's pretty exciting space, really, isn't it, when you think about it and, and just how far we've come. And, you know, there's a whole emphasis now on waste as well. So that all has to be taken into account when you're looking at what you're doing and how you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, um, yeah, the, 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 the greenhouse, you know, gas and stuff like that, like you look at the fridges out there, which is a... a, a, a um, I'm not an expert on refrigeration, so, but using the, the, the better gas for the environment, you know, even, you know, for gas equipment, cooking equipment, maybe in the future, they'll, they'll look at something, you know, a bit more um, um, better for the environment. Yeah, it definitely seems to be the way that, um, you know, when you look at sort of that mental health piece, which is obviously at the forefront of, you um, of the conversations at the moment the secondary part of that is that sustainability and and looking at that food waste it's um it's it's something the businesses have built a lot of a lot of sustainability plans etc and as you said looking at the equipment they're using and how they can be more efficient and more um and, and be more um environmentally friendly mm. Mm, it's pretty exciting really yeah, I think so. I think I think I think you know we, the industry still got a long way to go, but we're heading in the right direction. Mm. So that's exciting. So tell me, if you're having a dinner party and you could have ten people around the table, and they can be ten, any ten people, it could be from the past, the present, and the future. Who would be the ten people that you'd choose to have at that dinner table? Oh. Definitely my family first, my mum and dad, because they oh, and I, I haven't seen them for ages and, and my daughter haven't seen them for ages. So definitely um, my, 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 my niece and, and my sister. Uh, and where's your sister at? She's with my mum, mum and dad. Okay. 
so they, they're in the same house. So there's there's four of them, and then there's um yeah, and probably um my ex business partner um, who I saw the flower and seen for ages, um my 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 head chef who who I started my chefing with. And who was uh, that? He's always David Knopp. He he was from the oh, Australian really? club. Oh really? Yeah. So um, we used to call him Papa Smurf. Do you know David? I do. Yeah, he, we used to call him Papa Smurf because he had this white beard and he's really short. Like he's five foot four. Like I'm not that much taller, but he was shorter than me. And yeah, he he was my head chef when I first started in the industry. And um, such a yeah, small he, world. So is he kind of like one of your earliest mentors? Yeah, look, we still talk, and and he was he's he's always been my mentor, and uh, and uh, um his son Patrick and I sort of touch base every now and then, and and David and I sort of touch base every now and then. He's he's a great chef. He it's lots of fun to be with. Um, he lives down near the um Southern Highland now, so he retired from Australian Club and moved down there. And yeah, he's um he's he's a good guy. Real lot lot of time for him. That's really cool. And who else would you have? Uh oh, probably um well oh, I don't know, you put me on the spot. I'm trying <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make enemies out there because they're all looking. That's okay. Doesn't matter. No one's looking, it's just you and me. Um I don't oh, well, that David will be one of them and my mum and dad and my sister, um my best mate who who I play golf with a lot back then and Gareth is out in out, out, out in um, the ponds. Um, my old business partner, um, and and oh, he'd be your chef. Huh? He'd well, be your chef. He'd be the chef. Who would be my chef? I think an English chef that I used to employ. His name is Steve Diamond. He, his food was amazing. So I'll, I'll get him to come and cook for me. That's really mm, nice. Yeah. I love that. Mm. So throughout your career, other than David Knox, who else has played that? Who, who's been your biggest mentors? Well, David was always been one of them. Um, also another chef that used to work for me, his name's Carlo Mirandon. Um, he, he, he taught me, like he was working for me, so I was, I was his boss, but he taught me, don't ever let anyone to um, um, hold you, hold you. I don't know how to put it. So he, he, his food was fantastic. He was a sex food chef at um, West Bend back in the days. Um, he just don't take shit from anyone. You know, if, if, if a chef try and negotiate, he's just like, there's a door, go, I can handle this by myself, you know, and don't let them hold you, hold you to, to, to rent something, you know what I mean? He told me the toughness of being, 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 a, being a chef. So he, he's goal. He's, um, he's standing in scones now working in a pub. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and, and the other person, probably my business partner, Joanne, um, she probably, we bounce off each other really well. So... She'll go left, I'll go right. She'll go forward, I'll go backwards. We just work really well and we sort of know each other how we move and we challenge each other really well, you know, like, and, and that's how I think we were so successful for so long in, in running Flair because, you know, every day it's a challenge, you know, like, I'll do this better and she did this better and then you sort of just lift each other up. I mean, you, know, you know what they say, you know, you, you, you want to surround yourself with a person who can lift you up and, and she's definitely one of them, you know, and like, she, she, she just got so much drive, you know, and, and I think without her, I wouldn't be, you know, Flair wouldn't, you know, be as successful as it was. And where's, and where's Joanne now? What is she doing? She did bugger all. <laughs> <laughs> she did bugger all. She, she, she's at home. She, she, she likes the place like too, so she'll probably see this. She, she does bugger all. She, 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 um, she actually done... Um, mentoring for high school, I believe. Um, that's good. That's actually not bad at all. That's really important. Yeah, no, she, like, I, I'll take that back, Joe. But, um, 
but that's what she does. She, she's mentoring young kids. You know, it's fantastic. And, and that's what we need. You know, we, we, we need more people, you know, that, that can help and mentor the younger generations. Well, you know what? You're doing the same thing, though. And, you know, we thank you for, for mentoring um, the industry in general. It's not just the next generation. I, I don't think that you realise the impact that, that you have on people and just how much... Um, positivity and fun you can make things be and for that we thank you as well yeah and no, i thank you i i try my best you know it's i believe you know everyone should be a winner out of it you know and and, and there's no negative like even yeah with with the team and, and even my current colleagues at the end of the day you know life's too short you know we, we just got to make the most of it you know and, and, and have fun that's the key word have fun absolutely um, Mm. And um, listen, have a really nice uh, Father's Day, okay? Thank you. Yeah. It's all about quality over quantity these days. So I hope that uh, you and Ruby and your wife do something really special. Thank you. All right, sweet. Well, thank you for chatting today. Can you believe it's been an hour? I know, it flies, doesn't it? It just when, goes um, so fast. Every time I get on here with people and I think, oh, goodness, I, you know, it's quarter two, I'm going to start to ask some actual questions now. But thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, thank you, everybody that's been online. You've actually um, created a bit of conversation there. Andrew Ballard says to, uh, to say hi. You've got Brad Carson. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think I told you everyone else that was on there. It was nice to see Casey Parsons. I haven't seen him for a long time. Ah, there you go. There you go. See, we're bringing you're bringing us all together. Anyway, <laughs> you take care, and um, much love. we'll see you when we come out of this lockdown. Definitely. Have a lovely weekend. You too. Bye, Steve. Okay. Bye, bye.